Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I want to show you one of my best projects. It's uh, the 80 single board computer. I teased it a little bit uh, in one of my previous videos where I was talking about uh, the graphics card that is uh, based on the CPLD chip. Um, here it is, it's implemented on this computer and today I'm going to show you how this entire system works. But before that, um, I will uh, give you a tour over the board. I'm going to start with uh, CPU. It's a Z80 uh, CPU made by Zlog. It's clocked with a 10 MHz TTL clock. Uh, all the most of the peripheral devices are made by Zlog, except the sound chip. Uh, from uh, right to left, uh, here we have a serial I/O port, which is connected to uh, to uh, RG45 connectors, just to save space. Um, there's a, a Zlog PIO uh, chip that is uh, uh, connected to the DB9, two DB9 ports, which uh, implement um, Atari compatible uh, two Atari compatible joystick ports. Um, uh, this PIO chip is responsible for uh, reading uh, keyboard uh, key presses. Uh, in the middle, uh, you see the CPLD chip that is uh, Glue Logic. Uh, it's a basically a computer chipset. It's responsible for uh, mostly address decoding and some uh, signal conversion. Uh, this is a graphics card, uh, and these two chips. Uh, this is a CPLD I was talking about in my previous video that is uh, generating signals, and it's reading the uh, graphics memory from this um, dual port RAM. Uh, the RAM itself is uh, more like a ZX Spectrum. Uh, the uh, the layout of the video RAM, I mean, is more like uh, as the, on the ZX Spectrum, but uh, this um, a strange quirk where uh, a frame buffer is not linear, it's actually divided into three sections and the lines are jumping um, uh, by value of 8 uh, was removed. And uh, basically I have here is linear frame buffer with a linear attribute buffer, uh, not like in, in Sinclair ZX Spectrum, but the uh, graphic capabilities are the same. It's uh, 256 by 192 pixels and um, it has a 16 color palette and uh, each uh, square of pixels 8 by 8 can be assigned uh, one 4-bit uh, background color and one 4-bit uh, foreground color. Uh, sound is implemented using the uh, famous general instrument uh, AI 38913 uh, chip uh, and it has output over here right next to the VGA output and uh, there's also uh, the power button, uh, reset button and the uh, power plug. The printed circuit board is a custom made board. It's a four layer board uh, to improve uh, the signal integrity. Uh, it has uh, uh, two signal layers on top of one on the bottom and the two power layers in the middle uh, ground and VCC. In addition to the board, I also made the keyboard. Uh, it's a mechanical keyboard with uh, uh, custom printed keycaps. It's basically the standard 60, 61 key uh, keyboard layout that you can see a lot on PC, but uh, it has a, just a 8x8 eight eight matrix, keyboard matrix with the diodes that is um, connected uh, to the uh, PIO on the uh, Z80 single board computer uh, via this uh, IDC connector. I also made this uh, custom enclosure uh, for this computer. It's uh, 3D printed, uh, but I couldn't fit it on, on the uh, working area of my um, uh, regular FDM printer, so I had to order it from uh, the company uh, that used the SLS technology to uh, print this enclosure. It consists of two parts. Here you attach the keyboard uh, PCB and the bottom the the main uh, circuit board and close it like this. Uh, I'm going to use Movie Magic to assemble it and power on and show you what it's capable of. Um, now it's uh, fully assembled and uh, connected. Uh, so I'm going to switch to another view and uh, load one of the games I made for it. It's a Boulder Dash game prototype. Uh, I wrote it from scratch and uh, took graphics from the original uh, Sinclair ZX Spectrum game. Uh, here we are, powering on. Uh, as you can see, is a prompt of the uh, small uh, monitor program that resides uh, into in ROM of the computer, and it's just a few basic commands uh, to help starting out uh, with uh, uploading the programs and uh, changing some 
for all settings. Uh, here's the list of commands. Uh, you can basically clear screen, reset the computer, print this help, uh, dump memory region. And for example, if you want to debug something, you can load a uh, hex file uh, through the serial port. Um, you can jump to an address, you can debug some input output ports, uh, set screen color, uh, etc. Uh, I'm going to type load and uh, uh, run the batch file on my computer on the PC that will upload uh, the hex file of the game into this computer. Uh, the game is uploaded. Its start address is um, 4000 uh, hexadecimal, and I'm going to type jump 4000 uh, to start the game. Uh, that's a classic Boulder Dash game. You can control, since uh, this computer doesn't have cursor keys on uh, its keyboard, you can control it with the WASD keys. And uh, um, it's only single level implemented and there is no exit. So I'm going to run through it and show you uh, how it works. As you can see, you can easily die, so I'm going to reset and uh, try again. Jump 4000. Oh, died again. Let me try again. through this point where I previously died. Okay, and here supposed to be an exit, but it's just a single demo level, so uh, I'm gonna just push reset. Um, a second program um, I'm gonna show you is uh, the program I also wrote uh, myself from scratch in assembly language. It's a uh, tile editor. Basically, I use this program to uh, create tiles for the Boulder Dash game. So we're going to type load, I'm going to go to the computer and upload the hex file. Okay, uh, so now we're going to jump the same 4000 address. And we're going to load a tile set into this editor via the same serial port. So I'm going to press load and I'm going to repeat the upload of the different file from my computer. Okay, so uh, here uh, you see the um, original tile set of the Boulder Dash, how it looks uh, on the ZX Spectrum, but I actually, that's an old version of the tile set. I use a little bit modified one. So it looks like more like an Atari, original Atari game actually. So, and all the tiles you can navigate through, you can navigate through different tiles and you can use the same WSD keys. And for example, with the different key combinations, you can scroll, uh, you can inverse, uh, you can change colors uh, by typing F or B. For example, if you type F, you're gonna scroll through foreground color. And if you type B, you're gonna scroll through the background color. Yeah, and also uh, you can send this uh, tile set back uh, to the other device via serial port um, if you want to use it in your games. Um, and now I want to demonstrate, uh, the, show you a, a small uh, program I wrote recently uh, to see how fast it is comparing to the ZX Spectrum. It's gonna uh, plot random pixels on the screen and you can see for yourself that the fill rate uh, is really fast. So we do the same, we type load and we type send on the computer. So the program is small, it's loaded, jump to the same address, 
and here uh, it fills uh, randomly screened with uh, it says actually pseudo random number generated that's why you see uh, it's repeating itself back and forth uh, while inverting the pixels the fill rate is really fast a uh, few notes about uh, it's uh, how it compares to the Z Sinclair ZX Spectrum. So it was inspired by it, but of course it's uh, clocked by a much faster clock, uh, 10 megahertz, and uh, it has um, uh, the same um, kind of graphics resolution and number of colors, but with the modifications, like I mentioned before, it doesn't have this kind of like weird frame, non-linear frame buffer. Uh, its frame buffer currently totally linear, and the attribute values don't have uh, brightness and uh, flash attributes, so nothing is flashing on the screen, uh, both background and foreground for each 8x8 eight eight, uh, uh, square of pixels uh, uh, can have uh, one of uh, 16 colors. Uh, the colors are uh, basically the CGA colors, uh, kind of set of dark colors and set of bright colors and bright colors and, and dark gray and brown color in addition, uh, like a, a, a BMPC CGA graphics card. Uh, also, I want to mention that uh, unlike uh, Sinclair's Spectrum, it's um, running in uh, interrupt mode too, which means that the, uh, the, it can be configured to receive uh, vectorized interrupts, and this interrupt and these vectors can be located in uh, any region of the memory. So we can reprogram the CPU uh, and relocate the interrupt vectors into a different area and uh, um, uh, write your own kind of like service, uh, interrupt service routines. Uh, for this purpose, um, I didn't uh, mention that uh, it has a Zilog CTC clock chip that is connected to the output of the graphics engine. Um, it's generating the blanking interrupt when the um, engine stops drawing on the screen and uh, enters the blanking area. It will generate an interrupt. And also uh, you can program various clocks and timers using this chip if you want to have some kind of precise timing for music playback or from, for some specific game function like a game timer or anything like that. Mm, so uh, it's uh, kind of inspired by ZX, ZX Spectrum but it's not compatible with it because architecture is totally different. It's made from scratch but one of the benefits of this computer I also wanted to mention is it's made of uh, all currently available parts, uh, except the sound generator. Sound generator by general instruments is no longer produced, of course, it's like really old. Mm, you can find it on eBay or somewhere else, on some Chinese markets, uh, but the rest, you can, the rest of the integrated circuits you can buy right away from DigiKey or Mauser. It's a kind of complete up-to-date project and it's working just fine. It's really stable, it never hangs, uh, it works flawlessly. Um, in the near future I'm going to be publishing uh, the schematics and the Gerber files uh, and the CAD files uh, for you to be able to make it uh, yourself. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel, push the bell icon. There are going to be more videos like this. I have uh, plenty of cool projects to show you.